good evening dear audience today it's all about cpec as the caption is over there on your slide china pakistan economic corridor dear spectators in this video lecture i will dare try to share my information about the certain topic cpec Here are some of its outlines. Let's get started now. The first one is over there, as mentioned in number one, is the introduction of CPEC. The second one is development of Gavadar. Dear audience, in this second caption, there is a word Gavadar. Some details of this particular word will also be there. And the third one is previous project seal code. And in the third line, some sort of information will also be shared. What is seal code? And the fourth one is project under CPEC. The fifth one is the concept of one belt and one road. Dear spectators, under this caption, one belt and one road, I will try to share my information in detail. The sixth one is different routes on CPEC. The sixth one is geostrategic location of Gavata. The eighth outline is challenging for Pakistan. The ninth one is international challenges. At number 10, external challenges. At number 11, counter Indian elephants. At number 12, economic gains from this project, dear spectators. And at number 13, removal of social problems. Number 14, effects of CPEC. And the end of this, there will be the conclusion. Dear audience, now let's start in detail. As there in the outlines, the first caption was introduction. The CPEC is a 3000 km network of roads, railways and pipelines to transport oil and gas from Gavadar port to Kashgar city. The spectator, here you are watching on your slide the Gavadar port. Here I would like to share some of my information about Gavadar. Gavadar, it is a port situated on the Arabian Sea. And Gavadar is a city in Balochistan. And Balochistan is a province in Pakistan. Dear audience, Gavadar is a port to Kashgar city. A port is meant to be a town or city with a harbor. And it is from Gavadar port to Kashgar city. Kashgar is an oasis city in the Tarim Basin in northwest China. And the area is about 88,000 kilometers. And it is situated in the northwestern China's Xinjiang Yuga Autonomous Region, China Daily Reports. China and Pakistan have shown their keen intention to build the One Belt, One Road project, more commonly known as China Economic Corridor. It is expected to bring about both peace, more harmony, and prosperity in South Asia. Dear spectator, in your sixth line, one belt, one road project. What is meant by one belt, one road project? It is meant to be, it is Chinese initiative of economic and strategic agenda by which the two ends of Eurasia as well as Africa 
and Oceania are being more closely tied along two roads, one overland and one maritime. In my last stated lines, I have talked about the name Eurasia, so I find it imperative to share my some information about Eurasia. Eurasia is the largest continental area on Earth, comprising all of Europe and Asia. And the next word that I just talked about was Oceania. Oceania is meant to be a geographical region that is described as a continent in some parts of the world. Dears, now I try to summarize in this slide of introduction that what it is meant to be in the whole slide what is there. The length of the network of roads consists of 3,000 km and the basic purpose of it is to transport oil and gas. Whereas all of the terminologies that I have used in my delivery of this lecture, I think I have given you some sort of details of all that. Dear spectators, now we move to the next one. And that is who and when it was purchased, what was purchased. I was talking about the city of Gwadar, where this port is. On 8th September 1958, Pakistan purchased the Gwadar enclave from Oman. Gwadar officially became part of Pakistan on the 8th of December 1958. This boat was purchased for US $3 million and if uh, I convert these three US million dollars at that time it was amounting to 5.5 billion in Pakistani rupees. It is worth mentioning that the negotiations led by the Prime Minister of Pakistan who was Malak Farooz Khan Noon and his wife Vakarul Misa Noon with the said bin Tamur, who was the Sultan of Oman. Dear spectators, here I would like to share some sort of information regarding the man, the seventh Prime Minister of Pakistan, Malik Faroos Khan Noon. Malik Sir Faroos Khan Noon was born on 7th of May 1893 in Sargota, Punjab and at that time this city of Sargota was the part of British India but now it is a city in Punjab, Pakistan. Malksar Feroz Khan Noon was died on 9th December 1970 and he was the seventh elected Prime Minister of Pakistan and he was a Republican, the name of his political party. He was a highly trained person. He was trained as barrister in England. He served as a High Commissioner of India to the United Kingdom before serving as a military advisor over issues pertaining to the British Indian Army and he was the advisor to the Prime Minister Sir Winston Churchill of United Kingdom. The seventh Prime Minister of Pakistan Sir Malak Feroz Khan Noon was also awarded with some sort of titles as well. Then the first one was KSCI it stands for Knight Commander of the Order of the Star of India. It was the most exalted order of the star. 
and it was founded by Queen Victoria who remained the Queen of UK of the Great Britain and Ireland from 20th June 1837 until her death in 1901 and her era or period is best known as Victorian era. Her coronation was held on 28th of June 1838 and the next title which was awarded to the seventh Prime Minister of Pakistan, Sir Malak Feroz Khan Noon, was KCIE. It is meant to be Knight Commander, and it was one of the ranks of the Order of the Indian Empire. Dear audience, dear spectators, hoping to have some sort of information regarding the seventh prime minister of pakistan sar malak faroz khan noon dear audience dear spectators now move to our next slide and the next slide caption is over there on your slide and that is development of gavadar the project links china's strategy to develop its western region with pakistan's focus on boosting its economy including the infrastructure construction of Gwadar Port, together with some energy cooperation and investment programs. The CPEC will reduce China's routes of oil and gas imports from Africa and the Middle East by thousands of kilometers, making Gwadar a potentially vital link in China's supply chain. Dear spectators, now I do summarize the certain slide it is meant to be that after the construction of roads, China will be able to develop its western region. The focus of, of my words are its western areas, whereas Pakistan will see uplift and increase in her economy. It is meant to be that both the countries will enjoy maximum benefit when this construction is done over there. Dear spectators, now the question arises who started the Silk Road and in this regard, the expedition of Jiang Xi'en in 138 BC is considered to be the foundation of a Silk Road. And then the length of the Silk Road is 4000 miles, means 6437 kilometers. And the length of Silk Road from Kashgar to Islamabad is 1260 kilometers. Dear spectators, I think no have given a bit information with you people. Now let's get started. With assistance of China, Pakistan has gained ample importance not only in the region, but the complete world. In accordance with the China's enhancing economic engagement with Pakistan, should be seen in the context of Beijing's efforts to counter the United States' efforts to deepen the alliances around the Asia-Pacific region. The One Belt, One Road project. Dear spectators, the line I have just read over there one belt, one road, I have already explained it. And this project consists of three routes. Pakistan is a prominent partner for China as it links China to Central Asia, the Southern Asian region and the Middle East. Dear audience, dear spectator, I would better like to share some information regarding the words I have just pronounced over here regarding the regions. When we talk about 
the countries in the Central Asia, then the total numbers of the countries there in Central Asia are five. And the next one is South Asia. There are 11 countries in this region of South Asia. And then I named the Middle East. There are 21 countries in Middle East, East Asia. And they are Dear spectators, dear audience, as I have earlier mentioned that there are 21 countries in Middle East and 11 countries are there in South Asia and the names of the countries there in South Asia are Brunei, Burma, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, Vietnam and the last one, the eleventh one, Timor Leste is the eleventh country of South Asia. China and Pakistan have developed strong bilateral trade and economic ties and cooperation over the years. CPEC is an under construction mega project that will achieve the political and economic objectives through trade and development and will also strengthen the economic and trade cooperation between the two countries. Dear guys, dear fellows, dear spectators, there I have sounded a word bilateral and bilateral is meant to be Regarding two sides, meant to be Pakistan and China. Dear audience, dear guys, now come to our next slide, having the caption of different roads in CPEC. After the nice completion of the corridor, it will function as a primary gateway for trade between China and Africa and the Middle East. It is expected that this corridor will assist cut the 12,000 kilometers the route which Middle East oil supplies must now take to reach the Chinese ports. Now I do summarize the certain slide, dear fellows. The major point in this slide is that the construction of the roads under CPEC will shorten the distance of 12,000 km from China to Africa and Middle East. Hence, it will cut short the expenses as well as time. Dear audience, dear spectators, now move to our next slide, having the caption of Geostrategic Location of Gavadar. The eastern alignment of the corridor originates from Gavadar, travels parallel to the Makran coastal highway, eastwards to Karachi, and then after passing through parts of interior Sindh and southern, central and northern regions of Punjab, it reaches Islamabad. Dear audience, dear spectators, now I just explained some of the words mentioned in this slide. And there is, in your first line, the, the word alignment is over there, which is meant to be arrangement in a straight line or in correct relative positions. And in your second line, there is the first word on your left hand is originates, which is meant to be have a specified beginning. And there is a word right in the beginning of the third line parallel which is meant to be lines planes or surface side by side and having the same distance continuously between them and then in the same line there are the words makran coastal highway i would like to explain it as well 
Makran Coastal Highway is called as N10 or National Highway 10. It is 653 km National Highway in Pakistan, which extends along Pakistan's Arabian Sea from Karachi in Sindh to Gwadar in Balochistan province. While explaining Makran Coastal Highway, I used over there Arabian Sea, so I would like to put some information that the surface area of Arabian Sea is 3,862 km. Slide on your screen is Challenges for Pakistan. The construction of the corridor named as CPEC has been defined by many as a strategic movement such that Pakistan has assumed the position of economic pivot for the whole region. Wow. It is meant to be a regional analysis wing and it is an Indian spy agency has op opened a special office in Delhi and has been allotted 300 million US dollars to disrupt CPEC. Dear spectators, now move to the next slide having the caption of internal challenges for Pakistan. In Pakistan, some political parties like ANP stands for Awami National Party. In KPK, Khabar Pakhtunkha. Its prior name was NWFP, meant to be Northwestern Frontier Province. And then Baloch Nationalist PK. MAP, PK MAP, it is meant to be Pashtun Khamili Awami Party raised serious objections to the CPEC project. Security concerns have been the most critical challenge to the CPEC and both Pakistan and China have been trying to meet these. Here I would summarize this slide as it is meant to be that even in Pakistan, some of the regional parties of KPK and Balochistan have their serious concerns in its construction. Dear audience, now the next caption, the next slide is on your slide with the caption of external challenges for Pakistan. As an economic enterprise for the CPEC, the greatest challenge comes from competitions. The most significant is the Iranian port of Chabahar. The port of Chabahar is located on the Makran coast of Sistan and Balochistan province. Next to the Gulf of Oman and at the mouth of the Strait of Hormuz, it is the only port with direct access to the Indian Ocean. Here I would better intend to talk about the meaning of Chabahar. Chabahar is a shortened form of the Balochi phrase Chah means four and Bahar means spring. Hence Chabahar means a place where all four seasons of the year resemble springtime. India intends to invest significantly eighty-five million US dollar in the development of Chabahar, which lies a few miles away from Gavada and is part of its efforts for access to land locked Afghanistan and Central Asia while bypassing rival Pakistan. Here in this slide on the sixth line, there is a phrase, the Strait of Hormuz. I would better intend to explain this strait. It is a narrow channel, approximately 30 miles wide at the narrowest point between the Omani. In the second last line, I have pronounced sounded landlocked Afghanistan. So here I would like to explain what is meant by a landlocked country. It is an independent sovereign state 
that does not have direct access to an ocean. Dear audience, dear spectators, we we'll move to our next slide, having the caption of counter Indian influence. Indian involvement in Chabahar is linked to Pakistan's refusal to allow India access to transit to and from Pakistan. So, India sees Iran as the next best option. India is also unhappy with the handing over of Gwadar port development and its operations to China. Dear audience, on the slide in the third line, there is the word transit. Here I would like to share my some sort of information what is meant by transit trade. It's internal transportation of goods which are still under customs control and are not customs cleared yet. It is meant to be, it is a duty, custom duty. It is meant to Dear fellows, now the next slide is on your screen with the caption of economic gains from this project meant to be CPEC. After the nice completion of CPEC, Pakistan may become a trade hub in the region after Gawadar port starts functioning fully and duty-free economic zones are set up. Pakistan has been playing a significant role in South Asia. After the completion of the China Economic Corridor, economic, commercial, as well as geostrategic environment will improve in Pakistan. It will help Pakistan in dealing with the problems of poverty, unemployment and inequities of underdeveloped provinces. Dear audience, now I would like to summarize the certain slide that when the roads are constructed under CPEC, then the maximum benefits in terms of job opportunities will be with the Pakistanis. Dear audience, dear spectators, the next slide is on your screen with the caption of removal of social problems. CPEC will help build a robust and stable economy in Pakistan and will create a prominent opportunity for Pakistan to revive its industry and advance its economic. Now I summarize this slide as after the completion of CPEC, a boost in the Pakistan economy will be seen over there and much more opportunities for progress will be seen for the people of Pakistan. Dear audience, dear spectators, now come to our next slide on your screen. The caption over here is Effects of CPEC Projects. CPEC is the crown pearl in the new Pakistan economy paradigm. Because Pakistan has the opportunity to act independently of the Western influence, especially the US influence, as it has proved of late, irritant factor, dear audience, dear spectators. Now it's the last slide of our today's lecture on an internationally famous agreement of the constructions of 3,000 long kilometer roads and much more for the prosperity of the people of China and Pakistan. CPEC is not only the authentic name of road, port and railway system, but a multi-dollar mega project which will bring peace, harmony and prosperity in all the provinces of Pakistan. Dear guys, now it's over for today's lecture on the certain topic of CPEC. Hoping to have your very kind feedback on this certain lecture. Thanks to all for your very precious time.